Well, happy holidays to you, chat. On our weekend, our Sunday fun day, our Christmas Sunday fun day, or a Hanukkah Sunday fun day, or a rockin' hip-hop Kwanzaa inner city Sunday fun day. Whatever, whatever you're, uh, you're doing this week, uh, this will be the last Sunday fun day this year. And for those asking in chat, I saw a few people talking. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be moving over to Stream Me during the later half of the stream. But I thought we'd start here. And since we're so close to the end of the year, you know, what better way to do it than to look back at the things that have happened? I don't know if you're familiar or aware of this, but we are two days past the year anniversary of Trout and Tears. It was back on December 21st that I put up the first video about Trout, and we, we have seen a hell of a year take place. And it makes me wonder, where are they now? Like a VH1 behind the music, except none of these people have talent. They can't sing. They're not famous. They're probably not very wealthy. But it'd still be fun to do a little checkup and see what's been going on. I mean, what have the, uh, the gang been up to? What's Kraut been doing? What's Matt been up to? What about Davina? Has she finally completed her transformation? Has Sargon delivered the appetizers to Table 10, or is his manager going to have to dock his pay again? Will Donga stop dancing around the magic fireplace? I don't know. You can't really understand the ways of a trailer park Indian. But we'll try to unravel that mystery tonight, as we do a little bit of a, a year in retrospect, looking back on all the, the fond memories, and seeing where all this, this uh, interesting cast of characters, where they've, where they've gone. It's kind of like Dragon Ball Z, right? Well, not Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball G, or Dragon Ball Z GT. They're the the cast of characters. They're not really amazing. So yeah, Dragon Ball GT I think is probably the better way to go with it. We've got Pan and Baby. You can assign who you want to wear. But we're gonna take a look. We're gonna find out what they've been doing. Cause I can tell you right now, like that quote said at the very beginning, the gay ops are eternal. I mean, Haberman, bless his heart, he was ahead of his time. He knew the, how things were on the internet. That's why he wrote a, a very famous song about it. In fact, you know, I think to get us in the mood for it, we need to hear the words of wisdom from the juggalo god himself. You just, you need to take it and drink it in to really understand the wisdom of Haberman and how the ops, they are eternal. They never end. They just keep on keeping on, getting gayer by the dayer. Uh, let's see, let's... Let's throw that up. There we go. A, it's an oldie but a goodie from Medica Records. Here's the Duder with 24 Hour Ops. Let's use the mic again, okay? Check it. Yo, this is your boy, Scooby Doo Joint. All the motherfuckers, best of point your ears to this message. It's a message of respect. God bless us. Yo, much motherfucking wicked clown love. Speak up. I can't hear you over the sound of the dick in your throat. You can't cross this moat. My castle is the dark carnival hanging out with my family. Juggalos, you can't enter. You can't trespass. Otherwise, we're gonna beat your ass. Yo, you think you're so hot shit. Well, guess what? It's the lighter part, idiot. You're not anything that I can't beat. So get out of here. Be best move your feet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it's your boy, Scooby Doo Joint, reporting for Juggalos Online 666. Oh, that's a hot jam. That is, those are words to live by, chat. Words to live by. Wisdom from the sage himself, Habiberman. Blessed be his name. King of the Trolls, Lord of the Ops. Now, Kraut, yeah, let's, we'll give a little backstory before we delve into exactly what they've been up to lately. Now, Kraut, if you remember, was working with some very distinguished YouTube academics to take down the alt-right. Those goddamn dirty alt-right motherfuckers. They just need to be dealt with. Of course, things didn't go quite to plan as his, his uh, plot was unfoiled. It was foiled. Well, not unfoiled. It was foiled by multiple people. As information leaked out from his discords, he became embarrassed. It became quite clear that he had a grudge against the alt-right. There was speculation as to what the motivation behind that might be. Maybe it was Davina and his lust for Lauren Southern's pussy. Maybe, maybe Kraut just has a grudge. 
perhaps it was the fact that Rage wouldn't date some black guy, and so she needed to be taught a lesson. Whatever the motivating factor was, the Discord was set up and gay ops were afoot, and it all fell apart in a spectacular, mash or a spectacular fashion, costing Kraut quite a bit. His channel's been in heavy, steady decline since then. He's lost quite a few patrons, quite a few supporters and backers. Now people have distanced himself from him. Now he went to ground. He decided the best way to deal with it was just to leave the internet for a good four or five months. So Kraut disappeared. People wondered, I wonder what he's up to. Maybe he's out there doing that construction job that he always talked about. He wanted to live in the sun, earn, a, earn pay for a hard day's work. The toil and the sweat of his brow and all that shit. Of course, being a pasty, overweight Austrian made it difficult to do construction work. And so he was back. Back on the internet to do his publicity tour. And who was he aided by? Well, he was aided by Donga, among others, to try to sell people the idea that he was involved in no gay ops. No gay ops took place. No doxing happened. Nobody was targeted. It was all a ruse. Kraut was the victim of a alt-right conspiracy to drive him off the internet. His family was threatened. His friends were threatened. His accounts were hacked. All sorts of terrible things happened. And so Kraut needed to leave the internet to protect himself. Of course, Kraut conveniently forgot while he was doing his publicity tour that there was a multitude of things out there that probably pointed to other things than him being harassed as the reason that he left in shame. And it was in shame. I think I've got a few caps here lined up. Uh, here's one of the more well-known ones, a conversation that took place between him and I, I believe this was J.F. Gierpe. Or it might have been CRP. I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm not even sure at this point. But you can see right here, it's his second response. Have a happy Christmas. I gathered the docs of Coach Red Pill. I gave them to the Guardian because I thought you would defend him. Don't be too rough on those who worked with me. I don't know if I'll ever come back. All the best, whatever you plan. I gathered the docs of Coach Red Pill. But of course, Kraut is an innocent boy. He didn't do nothing, even though those are his own words, saying that he gathered the docs. But it goes even further than that. I mean, there was a Patreon message he left up for people. It's over. I don't know if I'll ever come back or when. I think I've gradually turned into a monster over the past two months, and I need to go. I need to get gone. I need to get the fuck out of here. What am I doing? I split my dick in half with an axe. I think I might be a little bit handicapped. <laughs> Mentally. Mentally, not physically. You'd think the wound to your penis would be what the, the disability was, but I think the prime motivator behind you injuring your penis is probably what the disability was. And then there were the conversations that took place in the Discord itself. I mean, shit, you had things like this. Good old Waz Lee, you might notice him on Twitter occasionally, gargling the balls of Kraut and anybody else that was involved in the Discord gay ops. Hey, dude, could you rename the target section of the Discord to something like people of interest or something? If this group leaks, which it will because they always do, having a section labeled targets isn't a good look. And Kraut's response... Okay. <laughs> very, uh, very prescient. Uh, you know, a little Nostradamus there. It's going to leak. Of course it's going to leak. Because you people have no OPSEC. You're fucking retarded. It leaks every time. Wazli was correct in that. But a targets section. Targeting individuals. Oh, terrible, crowd. What are you doing? But nothing bad, nothing nefarious took place. Nothing, nothing underhanded took place that is the message that he's giving people. He's recanting his apologies, his multiple apologies, his private and his public apologies, him leaving and coming back. He's spun an entirely new story about it to try to wash it away so he can start anew on his quest against the alt-right, I guess. I'm not really sure who he's going after at this point. It's really hard to define. But he definitely has a target in mind. You know, one of the more interesting things about Crowd, especially when he does his little PR campaign, is he, he seemingly has trouble kind of measuring up the two different things that he said. Because if you remember, he put up a video as well. And when you look at the private DMs where he takes responsibility and says, I doxed Coach Red Pill. But then you look at the apology video, that itself is a completely different story. He's got multiple stories. He can't get his story straight. Three, four, five different narratives, all juggling them at once. So of course he disappeared for a while to come back and spin an entirely new one. Try to get that message on point. Get a single coherent narrative established. 
But let's take a look at the apology video. Because he didn't say in his apology video that um, they were innocent. In fact, he said doxing did occur on that server. Another thing that contradicts his own statements recently when he's doing his PR campaign on the Kumite and all the other shows that he's he's popped up on. Now, he deleted the video, many of you but somebody did mirror it. So I will put that up. We'll take a look. It's very short. It's only two and a half minutes. Uh, let's see here. We'll go over to window capture. Uh, there we go. Let's Let's listen to what he had to say in his apology video. As many of you are aware, three months ago, I have opened up a Discord server with the intention of gathering together biologists, chemists, and other academics with YouTubers willing to make videos on race realism. About a week ago, we were suddenly confronted with accusations that we were running a doxing platform. We were stunned by those accusations, and we did not know where they were coming from, consequently acting abrasive and angry towards those who leveled the accusations. We have now, through the help of The Guardian, who you may know on Twitter as the Guardian underscore zero zero two and who was also a member of our server learned that a member was in fact gathering docs of people. Zef, who was introduced to me by Liz, who I had known for two years and trusted that she wouldn't be coming in here with malicious intentions. However, since this server was started by me, I have to take responsibility for the actions of people I have invited into this server. I Oh, he has to take the responsibility. So his server had members that were doxing, but now Kraut's saying it, it wasn't him. Even though when he was talking to J.F. Gerpe and DMs, he had said, I gathered the docs of Coach Redpill, and then I gave them to the Guardian, who in turn apparently gave them to King of Pole, who in turn put them up on Kiwi Farms. And then that information was used by Sargon of Akkad in a video uh, targeting CRP. Interesting. I therefore have to apologize to Jean-Francois Garipi for being threatened with his docs via email by Zef. The fact that he was not threatened by me is irrelevant here because I organized this server and allowed the person who threatened him within my trust. Coming together in a group call, we also came to the conclusion that Zef might have threatened Aiden Paladin with her dogs. As such, it is also my responsibility to apologize to you if that should be the case. I would also like to apologize to all other members of the server I created that I have so naively and stupidly entrusted someone with such power. Oh, just just terrible. That's just awful. So what story do we go with then? Was Kraut the one that docks people? Did he gather the information to pass it along to others to put up on a, a website so it would be public to be used in a video? Was it Zef that did it? Convenient that he would blame Zef for doing it when Zef was the one that leaked the audio of him and Sargon and other people like Jeff Holiday discussing what they were going to do and who they were going to do it to. Multiple calls were put up on a SoundCloud by Zef, so it's it's rather convenient to throw him under the bus. Yet even with this video and these screen caps and the myriad and different amounts of evidence that exist out there concerning what, you know, Kraut had done on the internet, his PR campaign states that he is innocent. There is no target list, nothing nefarious happened. They weren't harassing nobody. They're good boys. They didn't do nothing. But Kraut just couldn't help himself, though. He had to get back involved in what he was doing. And so recently, Kraut decided to pick up where he left off. Now, you know, originally he came back and he was doing Holocaust denial videos where he went to Auschwitz and looked like a man with Tourette syndrome filmed it. It's like Michael J. Fox on the fucking set of, I don't know, Back to the Future 4. Come on, Michael, try to hold still. I can't, I can't do it. Just shaking the camera left and right. I don't know if he's trying to recreate the feeling of being gassed because I got pretty nauseous watching that fucking video. Get a tripod. Get something to stabilize the picture, Kraut. What are you doing? Nonetheless, he decided to put that on hold and pick up his old ways again. And how did he do that? Well, he decided he wanted to go after Black Pigeon Speaks. Black Pigeon Speaks, the paranoia pornographer, as Kraut likes to put it. Now, what is his gripe with Black Pigeon Speaks? I would subject you to the 30-minute video that Kraut made, but I'm not that cruel. It is a holiday, and I don't want you to kill yourself over it. Well, their biggest gripe with Black Pigeon Speaks is that he doesn't cite his sources. I guess, I guess this is about ethics and citation now. They, they're claiming that he is a plagiarist because he takes information and uses it in his video without citing it properly. Now, one of the big gotcha moments they had was a specific instance where they said, 
Look at this. You you quoted the information this man used in nearly 70% of your video, but you never mentioned that you got the information from him. And well, I don't want to spoil what happened exactly because Black Pigeon Speaks put up a video kind of summarizing it. So we're going to take a look at that. But I want you to keep in mind that even after a six-month hiatus from the internet, even after going through what he went through with his Discord leaks and his gay ops being exposed, Kraut continually fucks up. It just doesn't end with him. He can't help himself. Even after attempting to have a fresh start and spinning a new narrative, he comes back and targets Black Pigeon Speaks for something absurd, and then looks like an asshole when it turns out they were wrong. So let's take a look at what Black Pigeon Speaks and others found out about Kraut's uh, critique of his content. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, where are we? There we are. Not sending their best. They are no. not sending their best. Academics, please respond. Now, this is going to be my last thoughts on the recent attack and slander videos made by the disgraced YouTuber Kraut and T, along with his band of equally dysfunctional sycophants. Now, you have to understand, this was a man who chose to chase a teenage girl off the internet because he disagreed with her. This is a man that stewed on his own rage, his own anger, his own paranoia and bile, and spent the better part of a year destroying himself and he not only destroyed himself he humiliated himself time and time and time again and in doing so showed to the world his filthy dirty lying character the man who ran a doxing server the man who would actually debate people with an earpiece the list goes on and on and on and on and Kraut left, as I said, the internet for a year in disgrace and in shame. And he only resurfaced uh, a little while ago, and he was bent on attacking anyone. And unfortunately, one of the goals of his, uh, his attacks and uh, his desire to hurt people was me. And he didn't care that he had basically become an internet meme of failure. Yeah, the thing to remember, and what Black Pigeon Speaks is talking about when he says, you know... I. Uh, what are the targets of his attacks? Remember, Wazli Screencap, a target list in their Discord server of alt-right figures. Well, apparently, Black Pigeon Speaks needs to be one of them. So Kraut releases his video attacking uh, Black Pigeon Speaks citation practices, which is just, who fucking cares? Who, who gives it? It's YouTube videos. Who fucking cares, Kraut? But that was the big hill they wanted to die on. So what happened? After releasing his 30-minute video and showing up on a stream to argue with people about this practice, well, let's skip ahead a little bit because it has to be seen to be believed. I'll be honest with you. I welcome you to point to where that article is listed in your source. Just, I'm saying he has a is, screenshot from this that's like a mile long, and there's literally I don't even know how many citations on this. Probably like oh, okay. 50. Well, may, maybe I missed the citation. That's I'm what sorry. I'm saying. Like maybe you missed there's one. so many. All right, so. You have a university education, so you know full well if you make a claim word for word from somebody else and you don't source it, it's placed. <laughs> but do you realize how goofy this looks when you see all these citations and then you're trying to say he's trying to get away with plagiarism? Does that even make sense? Yeah. yeah. There's, so there's if I were trying to get away with plagiarism, I'd spam a bunch of links to irrelevant shit as I'm quoting somebody else's word. Oh, my God. A few moments later. <laughs> Yeah, archive.org details B2044258 sex and culture electronic resource full book uh and yeah you did you did actually cite it so <laughs> there for what sure. a what a faggot <laughs> <laughs> wow this was oh. there <laughs> <laughs> So after Kraut and his gang decide to go onto the kill stream to confront Black Pigeon Speaks about his lack of citations in his videos, and they use this prime example of a video that was put into limited state saying, hey, in, uh, in the description when it was up, you didn't have this in there. You didn't cite the sources. Well, lo and behold, an archive exists of the video that clearly shows in the fucking sources. What do you know? He did cite it. So Kraut and his group spent 30 minutes in a video, probably weeks of research, 
looking for an angle of attack against Black Pigeon Speaks, which I don't even think most people would give a shit about in the first place, but they fucked it up. He did cite it. He cited the man's book where he got the information. He cited the book that the articles were citing when they were talking about the concepts that were being discussed. Once again, Kraut fucking explodes. He uh, self-immolates in front of an audience. His group of YouTube academics aren't the smartest people on the internet. And we are once again in a cycle of just plain stupidity. And speaking of plain stupidity and cycles that apparently don't ever end, maybe you're unaware of this, but Kraut and his academics, along with Davina, uh, the beautiful woman you see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, decided that, well, if they couldn't get Black Pigeon Speaks, maybe they're going to go after Ethan Ralph. And they wanted to pin on Ethan Ralph the fact that uh, Sargon was deplatformed from Patreon. And what better way to do that than to show screen caps, to make a video? Davina made a video exposing Ralph, saying that his uh, Discord server was responsible for getting Sargon kicked off of Patreon. Now, coincidentally, they didn't start saying this and presenting their evidence, quote unquote, until the Discord server had been deleted by Discord itself for violating uh, terms of use because people were saying naughty words in there. Rather convenient to get rid of the, the prime example of evidence before making your claims on what they're doing. But Davina and Kraut and his group are so fucking stupid, just so pants on head retarded, so water brained in their attempts at taking down people and anybody that they have a, a gripe with. They fucked this up as well. Much like Black Pigeon Speaks in the video he did on him, where he completely fucked up his angle of attack by saying you didn't cite your sources when he in fact did cite his sources. Turns out that uh, good old Davina, in her beautiful and brave video, accidentally put up two <laughs> contradicting screen caps, which actually contradict another screen cap they were passing around. In the same video, spaced apart by not more than 10 fucking seconds. So let's take a look at that. Of the... Uh, people claiming responsibility in uh, Ethan Ralph's Discord server for taking down Sargon. Let me just pull the video up here. Where did I put, where did I put Davina's beautiful, there we go, the Sargon widget. Uh, I need to cue this up at the exact right time. What you're going to be seeing is a, a segment of Davina's video, Sargon and the Patreon Witch Hunt, in which she's showing Clear, concise evidence that Ethan Ralph and his Discord were involved in removing Sargon of Akkad from Patreon. But there are two, there are two things you're probably going to want to pay attention to. So let's see them when they pop up. I believe it's at 12:02 and 12:08. Let's do. Where is it? There we go. Window capture. Now, if you can't see it clearly on the screen as you're watching the stream, feel free to go look, and I'll give you the time codes as we go through. The pace bin of evidence that was used to flag him was organized by people in Ethan Ralph's Discord server, the Spy Club. And one of the people who was pushing it around a lot was uh, Negro Joe. Someone that Ralph has regularly had on his show and has tried to uh, run into Okay, here's the first screen cap. This is from the Spike Club chat. Now I want you to look in the middle there. You've got absolutely regenerate. Now he's listed in there and he's saying, ha ha, Ralph keeps going back to Sargon's remove Patreon good stuff. Under that, Free For All says, oh shit. Under that, Koldatha says, lol what? And then finally, default Quan Donanda says, lol. Now that's that's a, uh, a direct rip right from the actual Discord, apparently. So that's the, that's the way the conversation took place. Look at the time on there. 6.15, 6.15, 6.15, 6.15. 6 so this all happened... They're all talking actively with each other, talking about Ralph going to look at Sargon's remove Patreon. I believe this is during when Ralph was doing his stream, talking about it. Who knows? Now look at the second cap, the one that they're presenting as their evidence, that he shows in the exact same video, because they're just dum-dums. ...appearance for accusations of flagging on his servers before. So, yeah, this, this was definitely... Here we go. Here's the second one. This is the one that Kraut was putting up on Twitter. This is the one that Davina was sharing as well to other people. Looks, uh, looks familiar, doesn't it? You remember that uh, sequence of conversations that took place? There's absolutely regenerate, but this time he's saying something different. Lol, my pace bin fucking worked. Ahahaha. Get fucked, Sargon. Oh shit. Lol, what? Lol. So I'm curious here. What's going on? Because we look at this conversation... Just uh, just a few moments. Oh, let me back it up here. Back it up. 
clearance for accusation. There we go. It says, Ralph keeps going back to Sargon's remove Patreon. Good stuff. Oh shit, lol, what, lol? But then moments later, moments later in the exact same fucking video, it says, not that uh, Ralph is looking at the Patreon and talking about it on his show, but instead says, my pace been worked. Haha, ha, get fucked, Sargon. And then the same conversation directly below it. Oh shit, lol, what, and lol. Once again, academics are not responding properly. Kraut is back for, I don't know, the last three or four months and already two catastrophic fuck-ups. The first one, screwing up going after Black Pigeon Speaks by completely having the wrong angle of attack and making an assumption and an assertion that just gets smacked around in the course of maybe 20 minutes. The second one, going after Ethan Ralph, saying he's responsible for removing Sargon from Patreon and then using doctored screen caps as their evidence. But it gets even funnier because somebody else put up another screen cap saying, oh no, you don't understand. Both those things were, were actually talked about. Both those things were actually discussed. Uh, you just need to look at the evidence. You, you, don't, you don't understand. Uh, that was just redacted to make it more, more readable. Radio Brain, real Radio Brain, put this up on Twitter. Maybe you remember him. He used to argue with people on the Kumite back in the day. I believe he's a good skeptic liberalist. Uh, let's take a look at this cap here. Uh, he says, busted, and he's got a, another screen cap. Looks like another Discord conversation showing something entirely different. Let's let's take a look. Well, that's the conversation again. Now, he's saying, oh, well, you see, they redacted one of the things, but the truth is both those statements are in there. There's absolutely regenerate, and he says this is the actual order the conversation took place in. Ha ha, Ralph keeps getting, or going back to Sargon's removed Patreon. Good stuff. Then we've got somebody we didn't see in either of the other caps, uh, Valsi saying, lol, but then there's absolutely regenerate again, saying, lol, my pace been fucking worked. Ha ha, get fucked, Sargon. Oh shit, lol what? And lol. And then, of course, another Chatelaine kid. But are you noticing something? Are you paying close attention? Because the geniuses, and they are geniuses, maybe they work at Apple, who knows? One of the bars to fix people's computers. The geniuses, when they doctored the caps a second time, fucked up uh, a, a minor thing, a minor thing. Uh, it's a second one. By regenerate, lol. My it doesn't say paste bin. It doesn't say paste bin like it did in any of the other screen caps. It says pate bin, p a t e b i n. Fucking worked. Now he's trying to say this is the real one. Lol, my pate bin worked. Well, let's go. Let's go look at the video again. Did it say pate bin? Because I'm pretty sure it said paste bin. It's almost like uh, they're incompetent retards. I don't know. Let's let's go take a look. Let's go. Let's go take a look at that second one. Where is it here? Up oh, there we go. Pull it up on screen. LOL, my paste bin fucking worked. Ah ha ha ha, get fucked, Sargon. So, how disastrous is that? To fuck up two deceptively edited screen caps. To include them in the same video in the first place, mere seconds apart from each other because you're retarded to pass them around on Twitter because you're retarded. But then to put up a screen cap trying to show the, the true conversation, but then misspelling Pastebin, when Pastebin was spelled differently in multiple other places. What are you, what are you doing, Davina? What are you doing, Kraut? What are you doing, Radio Brain? This is amateur league shit. This is Bush League stuff. This is minor league baseball. You need to bring your big boy bats. Grab your gloves. Be a slugger out there in the field. What the fuck's going on here, champs? Just sad. Just sad and embarrassing. Here's Kraut returning to the internet to just implode once again. Here's Davina trying to help gay ops and fucking it up by putting putting two contradicting pieces of information in the same video. There's Real Radio Brain and other people posting around a another screen cap that misspells the first two screen caps. Just a disaster. I'd never met such stupid people. Just dumb. Dumb and shameful. How do you how do you screw up continually this bad? Now, if we had to rate the arc we're seeing, you know, Kraut's uh, online career at the moment, like where how would we rate that? What what's his redemption arc looking right about now? Well, he disappeared for six months, which I suppose you could say is good. I mean, why stick around if you're gonna get your shit kicked in? But then he came back and he he tried to deny he did anything, even though multiple pieces of evidence exist out there showing that he did, in fact, do stuff. First, it was him claiming he did it himself. Then it was claiming other people in his server did it. 
And now it's, oh, my family's been threatened, even though I filed no police reports, even though there's no evidence that that took place. I mean, these are the same people that would never take Brianna Wu or Zoe Quinn or Anita Sarkeesian's words at anything without having evidence for what they're claiming. And yet Kraut wants to claim that his family was threatened. He was threatened without ever provo or providing evidence that that took place, saying that's what drove him off the Internet. And then here he comes back and goes after Black Pigeon Speaks and his little gaggle of YouTube academics completely fuck it up. Here's the Vina trying to go after Ethan Ralph and blame Ethan as the, the mastermind behind uh, Sargon of Akkad being removed from Patreon, completely fucking it up, putting two different screen caps of the same conversation in. Then there's their hanger-ons, putting up even more screen caps to contradict those screen caps. I don't know, Chad. You tell me. I've talked for a little while here. You tell me what you think his redemption arc is going on right now. Because I'm not rating it too highly, I'll be honest with you. It's not looking, it's not looking spectacular, Chad. It's not looking like a, 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 a glorious return. This would be the part of the story on VH1 where they started shooting a little too much heroin and the money started disappearing. You know, like the 35, 40 minute mark. That's where we are in the hour long presentation. Oh, I have to wait for chat to catch up to me. I forgot there's always a little bit of a delay. Sorry about that. 1488, I don't know if we can rate it a 1488. He might try to target you with his target list. I'm sorry, person of interest list. Not sure, <laughs> not sure how that's going. I've uh, seen a lot of a lot of people saying it's not looking too good. I have to agree. It's not looking like the best redemption arc, is it? Well, we'll leave we'll side table crowd right now. We've we've got a lot of people to discuss, so we're doing our little year in review, our little redemption arc. And I suppose we should move on to who should we do next? I mean we could talk about Davina. Where's that money, David? Where's that ten thousand fucking dollars, David? But he hasn't really started his transition yet. Now, I gave him a year's worth of time, and I said that about two months ago. So we've got about another 10 months before we have a real interesting story with Davina. But believe me, she's going to transition into a beautiful young lady. And when she does, we're going to have a hell of a video or a stream to discuss about it. So I suppose maybe we should jump over to Mr. Matt Mundane. The Boulder Boy, Quarry King, Minecraft Matt himself. What has good old Matt been up to? Well, Matt had a hell of a year. His numbers have gone through the floor. It's like him and Kraut are racing for dead last. They want to see who can reach the bottom of the barrel first. And they're pretty much neck and neck. I think uh, Matt is sitting at around 140-something thousand subs. Kraut is nearly under 100,000 subs. Probably by the first or second week of next year, he will be below that number. Seeing who can become irrelevant first. Their metrics are awful. People have stopped really watching them even though they've tried to gain relevance by doing the same old shit they always did. Maybe it's time to switch up the game, but I guess they're going to just stick to the definition of insanity and try the same thing over and over, hoping for a different result. Well, Matt had a bit of a, a snafu earlier in the year. He was on a live stream with other people, and the live stream was making fun of him. And what do you know? The live stream went down. Well, they start up another one, bring Matt on, and confront him, saying, Matt, we believe that you... You flagged it. We also believe that you've engaged in that behavior quite a bit. You've, you've done this quite a bit. To which Matt denied. But give it about 20 or 30 minutes, and what do you know? Matt comes forward with his flag history, and he was, in fact, flagging people that made fun of him on the Internet. Now, I've been told, and I've got some clips, we'll take a look at them in a minute here, that Matt, much like Kraut, is going on a PR campaign trying to convince people that what you saw with your very own eyes... And what you heard was, in fact, not true at all. That he is claiming he never flagged anybody. That it's completely fake news and fabricated. Even though there is video evidence of it, and multiple people were on the stream. People like Keemstar and The Quartering and others were there when Matt revealed his fucking history. James Alsip was there, I was there, Ethan Ralph was there, Zidane, Gator, and many people watching. As Matt uh, basically exposed himself in front of a very large audience. And yet Matt is trying to claim that that never took place, that it's all fake news. So you know what? In fact, let's, we'll just jump into it. It's just audio. It's from a, a stream. Guess who he was doing the stream with? If you guessed Crowd and T, you guessed correctly. You know, I've noticed another interesting thing. You've got Monday Matt, Kraut, Davina, 
Uh, you've got Donga, Tommy C. I've noticed that these people have all started to kind of group together. And I've also noticed that all these people are those that I've encountered throughout the last year and shit on. It's almost getting to the point of being a fucking emotional support group for them. It's like Medicare, it's like a Medicare rehab where they all get together and talk about their traumatic experiences with the bad man named Jim on the internet. And they, they get together and they hug box with one another and they talk about how terrible the eviction was and all. It destroyed my family. But that's, that's what they've been up to. So let's listen to some, uh, these are clips that were sent to me. I, I didn't have a chance to sit down. It was a three and a half hour long stream, but I will point out two things. Uh, the per, there, some of the people in this stream, uh, like Liberal Sanity Project, was a person that went on the kill stream and confronted Black Pigeon Speaks and was saying, you don't cite your sources. That's somebody that works with Crowd and T. Another person that was on the stream was Habib. Habib was the person that actually ran the Discord server they used to go after the alt-right. And then there's Monday Matt. Monday Matt, you know, saying he is innocent, that uh, none of these bad things happened. So let's pull up some of these clips I got sent and let's see what we've got. I don't think any of them are too long. Uh, okay, I've got them queued up here. In fact, you know what? I, I, oh, let me... Oh, what are we at? We've, we've got about 35, 40 minutes. Let me take five minutes. I'll read some of the Super Chats to get caught up here. I know people have been donating. I appreciate it. I'll read some of them. And then we will get into the clips of the, the stream that happened today where Matt is trying to claim that he is innocent and that everybody on the Internet is apparently retarded because they believe otherwise. So let me start this out. Let me let me have a cigarette first. Let me light this up. Nothing like cancer, kids. Delicious. Oh, who needs to vape? You don't get tumors from vaping. Come on. From Puppet Pal Clem, would you do some dink prank calls with my boy SPCC on StreamMe? I think you'd be killer at it. I used to do prank calls. I actually had a lot of fun doing it with Kermit and uh, Gerpy and Hack and everybody else. I haven't done it in a while, though. Uh, but maybe. Maybe. I'm going on StreamMe after this stream to do the second half of this stream. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I farted and sharted. Thank you. From HTRTU, here's an idea for the next art contest. Shit rat doing voodoo or sucking off the devil in order to avoid getting called out online. Well, the man does have a fucking halo tattooed on his ass. I don't know how he avoids it. But the majority of time when somebody targets him, wants to talk about him, wants to look at him, he finds a way to get away with it. From Nick Pillars, there will be a video out in a few days. Lied Papa Jim, who's crippling addiction to video games and streaming, was getting more and more apparent. Well, I am working on a Hampshire video, uh, for those wondering, and there is an update. Apparently, the Hampshire project is in full swing. The underwater utopian, or the underwater utopia for hamsters is going forward. There are two new hamsters, and uh, they've been voted. People voted for the names, and apparently, they've been named uh, Jade and Jim. Fantastic. I'm loving it. Uh, but that video is coming. Uh, it should be out uh, relatively soon. From Lord Akira, you skipped my super chat last time on accident, but what are your thoughts on Doug Walker being outed as a furry? Also, you should have picked Tekken Tag Tournament. Anyways, Merry Christmas, Jimbo. I'm unaware of Doug Walker being outed as a furry because I, I kind of stopped paying attention to that guy with the glasses once I was done with the videos. Uh, sorry, I, I don't really have an opinion on it. I haven't seen it, but it sounds funny, so if somebody wants to send that to me, and I, I'll definitely take a look because I love a chuckle. From Fash Bandicoot, press S to spit on Sargo. <laughs> Press S to spit on Sargon's aborted son. Corbin Markey, have $2, you beautiful faceless man. Elix Snow, Merry Buckin' Christmas to you and yours. Happy Winter Solstice to all. From Sebri, found out yesterday from down the rabbit hole that those CIA knee... <laughs> okay, I get it. CIA knee guys finally got to Terry A. Davis a few months ago. May the random number generator have mercy on his crazy soul. From Melissa Berry, diddly D potatoes, to be sure, to be sure. HTR to you. Jim, if you watched the Hampshire update for 12, 16, 2018, the Hampshire guy named the new hamsters after you and Jade. Uh, yep, just just right now talked about it. And it updated. Uh, there we go. From Afro Man John, why aren't you doing this on Streamy? God's chosen people tube doesn't want us anymore. Veggie Bad, is it a surprise to find out the intellectual people on YouTube turn out to be massive retards? Uh, no, it's not, by the way. This has been going on ever since YouTube first started, especially with the atheist community. Uh, you'll come to find out fairly quickly that a lot of these skeptics are atheist community uh, expats, I guess? Cast-offs, drift-offs, uh, former members? From HH, sorry Jim, but I'm rooting for Ralph to win against you in Mortal Kombat X. Him winning was the funniest outcome. From Paul Cabra, calm before the storm right here. 
How was I going to start this off? Oh yeah, that's an awfully hot coffee pot. Probably not. Donald Trump coffee pot? Coffee hot, coffee not, probably coffee pot. Those sick lyrics, I'm sure, are from Eminem's new hot album. Dragonzord69. Merry and white Christmas and a happy new year to everyone except for the Swindon Swindler and his capos. Rando number nine. All right, I'm about to order some Applebee's. What should I get? I'm going to suggest you get a barf bag if you're going to eat Applebee's because that food is shit. From Naughty Carmo Bunny 74 Mr. your delicious voice, groomy dad or gymster. Cody Culp, watch this Argon anime, it's brilliant. Read three more here. Ain't on the new Murdoch Murdoch is up on cheeky videos. Yeah, I watched it earlier today. Fantastic shit. Asthma Hound, Merry Christmas, you old fart. You should start collecting spines predator style at this point with Ethan's right in the middle. And finally, Bagel Goose, 1488, think of the children. And I will read the others as we proceed, but I don't want to break it up too much here. Now, as I said, we're going to look at the Monday match yet. We're going to look at what they've been saying on their stream about how innocent they are, what good boys they are. So let's jump into that. Um, I, I don't know which one's which. We're just going to go through them. No, yeah, you can, you can fucking... I, I just, I just want to point probably, out yeah. one more thing. Yeah, it's also kind of like when he DM'd, when he DM'd fucking Sargon and said, I'm sorry we were making fun of your dead son. Yeah. What I, what oh, I, it's I, really I, similar. What I will say, what I will say is, is this, this is the final statement I make about Ralph, is, uh, dude, you are not the victim. You are not the victim. You are not the hero of your own story. You are a villain, and you're a piece of shit. Nobody uh, loves you. And no one loves you. Right. And eventually everyone's going to leave you because you offer nothing of value to any human ever. And you simply serve to hurt other people because for some reason you have a real fucked up morality system. And you only do it because you make money. We all, right. all know privately. No, no, no. We all know privately. <laughs> privately. <laughs> you yeah. fucking, you will, you will backtrack and you will be nice to people privately. But then publicly you become the world's biggest, tiniest cocksucker. Right? <laughs> like that's all you are. It's just that kind of now? person. Who cannot hey, be treated right, 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 right. I came back and I <laughs> No, so here's that the deal. No, 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 fuck no, no, Ethan no, no, Ralph. No, 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 fuck no, him no. to eternity. Yes, we have a fuck. fucking rusty dildo right in the fucking sphincter. It's Christmas, Matt. Let's have <laughs> Christmas love. Hey, Christmas love? Okay. Talk to my balls, Jesus. It's, it's Christmas. It's Christmas, man. Well, say something more on Christmas. Okay, okay. Say something nice to Ralph. Say something positive. Say something nice to Ralph. Something nice to Ralph for Christmas. I should uh, say, too, this Merry Happy Eve of Christmas Eve stream that they were doing had a whopping 25 people watching it. Really bringing in the high numbers, Crowd and T and Monday Matt and all his assorted uh, YouTube academics. Fuck Ethan Ralph. Ethan Ralph is a villain. I've heard that line before. I had a certain Applebee's waiter say that I was monetizing evil on the internet. Apparently that has been cast off onto Ralph now. And he is a, a Disney villain, perhaps? A bad guy out there? He's Cobra Commander of the the kill stream. I, I'm not sure exactly what he's going for here, but that's not the clip I was looking for. The one I'm looking for is the one where he he tells everybody what a good boy he is, how he did nothing wrong. Let's see if we find that one. I, you know, I think people need to drop this whole fucking op shit because not everything is an op. Like everything's an op. There, there's no, there have been like legitimate no, ops that get no, completely explained away by people going like, no, 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 that's not like they this makeup shit to try to make it go away. Uh, all well, like actual ops happen in real time and people are like completely okay with it. It's the weirdest thing to watch on It's because of Jim. It's because of Jim. Because Jim declared that whenever YouTubers speak to each other that are not him or Ralph, it's an op. Well, you know, if there is someone who's very capable of grooming young people into thinking a certain way, it would be Mr. Medicare now, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah. Ironically <laughs> enough, the Discord ops are located on Ralph's, well, now deceased server. That would be a Habib speaking. Uh, that's the person that ran the Discord server for Kraut. But uh, let's continue this thing. Uh, well, he's. I guarantee you he's got more. I guarantee you he's got more. Oh yeah, probably. I, I love. I love the attempt at explaining that away. They're fucking fake. Yeah, dude. You know, uh, people have been watching that shit for what now? Six months. Uh, and uh, taking screenshots. Yeah, that shit ain't fake. Not yeah. all that shit's fake. I'm sure people did fake something. Uh, well, but, I uh, think. I think something came off the cowboard. I think that's where. Dave yeah. has a picture, yeah. and that's why you don't take shit off the cowboard because you don't know what's doctored and what's not. Yeah. Um, it, but it, the, I've 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 seen the server. I was. In I a, I have too. So, so they're all in Ralph's server. That's interesting. Why would Habib, the guy that ran Kraut's gay Discord op server, and Monday Matt and all these other people be going into to Ethan's server? You know, and they're all in it before it gets mysteriously reported and taken down. Huh. Makes you think. 
or as they like to say now, gets your noggin jogging. I have not like it, I've it, seen it, my home address in that server. I've seen photos of my girlfriend and my kid in that server. Yep. Definitely seen them. So, you know, trying to sit there and argue that it's uh, it's all public. Yeah, fuck yourself, you pieces of shit. Yep. I've seen that shit first fucking hand. So I've seen people openly discuss attempting to go after my grandfather. Right? Like, it's the weirdest shit. Because I don't think these little fucking spurgs realize that uh, you can Google anything inside there. You can search for shit that goes back, like, to the beginning of the chat. So it's not hard to look up certain topics of conversation and see them play out. I, I just I understand that their smooth brains are getting used to something as easy as Discord, but uh, they're still fucking stupid. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh yeah. Let me let me just kind of I just uh, let me see if I can find the exact moment here. This one is a bit of a long clip. I'm looking for that key segment where he says he's completely innocent, that he didn't do nothing. I just want to kind of clear the record on one fucking thing here. Oh, here At no point did I touch Ralph's channel or stream, but his little fucking minion army decided to dig into my every aspect of my fucking life for fucking months and then tried to say that I'm the one that hurt him. Right. I'm sorry. I'm not his father. I didn't leave. OK, so <laughs> fuck him. Everything about him. My favorite thing is going to be and Ralph. I really hope you're listening to this, dude, because I'm going to laugh my ass off in a couple of years from now when your wife gets her green card and then she leaves your ass because you're going to be unfucking employable. That's what I'm waiting for, because that's going to be fucking funny to me. Talking about guys, grooming. guys, guys, what, what you're that? listening to right here, that's edgy Matt. That's the Matt behind the scenes. That the That's the Matt we no, take I'll to say, I, I'll this, I'm you, fucking you. pissed off at the fact there's been so much fake goddamn news about me, right? Like, so much fucking fake news. I heard more of it this morning, which is why I'm pretty pissed off. <laughs> oh, because sure. it's just the narrative is goddamn garbage. What did you hear right? this morning? Oh, oh, fucking, this was Tonka, and I'm mad at Tonka, too, because Tonka's like, you know, Matt flagged me down. No, I didn't. And Tonka, I proved it to you. And vamp and failure. I didn't flag anybody down. No one went down as a result of my idiocy. All right. No fucking video went down. Okay. So there we go. There's the there's the amazing statement from Monday, Matt. Nobody went down. Okay. No videos were taken down. No channels were taken down by Matt. He is innocent. It's all fake news. Why well, happen to have the time codes of the stream that he was on where he got exposed, exposed by himself because he's pretty fucking dumb. Let's uh let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that and what see uh, and see what pops up. Uh, let me let me pull up the time codes here so I can get this lined up for everybody. Uh, where are we? Okay, so 135 148. That's what we're looking for. 135, uh, just one moment. Now, this is the uh, stream that uh, I was on, uh, quartering, all sip, Keemstar was on, Zidane, Ethan, Ralph, Gator, and Monday and Matt. And during the course of the conversation, Zidane had brought up that you can show your flagging history on YouTube. And so Matt was convinced to show it to prove that he wasn't flagging down people. Except, uh-oh, uh, there's a bit of a, a, a snafu, a little bit of a problem. Apparently Matt does flag down people. Now remember, in his stream with Kraut, he's doing his PR campaign and saying he never got any videos taken down. He never got any channels taken down. So let's watch how this plays out and see if Matt's full of shit. Which, uh, spoiler alerts, he's totally full of shit. Let's see it. All right, hold on, my pants are off. Oh, Jesus Christ, all right. Matt, what there are you doing? Head. How's it taking so long? Look at all those tabs! I have a lot of tabs open, but I have... Is that Tommy Pace? Is there but nothing, oh, but nothing on Now, yeah, wait on, a minute. Oh God. Nothing that's on that. That's just, what that's the just, fuck? So, <laughs> I have been in a not the best place mentally. And... Now, wait a minute, oh, Matt. Oh, okay. No! <laughs> now, that's the initial reveal. That's when Matt showed his initial flag history. But if you're watching really carefully, you can see that he can scroll down that page. And this is the important bit when Matt's claiming he never got any videos taken off the internet and never got any channels taken down. Because when he's made to scroll through it again, well, I'll let you see for yourself. I believe the time code on that is 148. So let me back this up to 148. And uh, let's let's take a look. Let's see what happens. Put it all out there. All right. Screen share. Now. 
No, oh, it was just there. Oh, here it is. It was for a second, yes. Okay, you guys see it? I yeah. see a lot of Dane so, Pesos. So videos, a lot of Dane yes. Pesos. It's it's the last Andy Worski. I see a Worski. It's the video. shit. The shit Worski. about me when oh, the oh you the flagged the Kumite started. too a couple times. I got, the fuck? Yeah, it was a lot of it was a, like I said, a lot of shit's gotten under my skin, and I've acted very inappropriately, and that is. It's Talk all within the last few months, and yeah, and I owe people uh, uh, an apology. So, but if you notice, everything is active; nothing's been taken down except for that uh, one information. I see failure. I don't know. I, see I don't know which one. Uh, yeah. You know what? Scroll back up. Uh, you know. Uh, you know what? Scroll back up. Ah, oh, sorry. The video got uh, got snagged there for a second. Uh, you know, uh, just that's to it. Make... It's, it's the okay. ones in the. It's in the last few months. I've just been. In a very Wait, bad place. But, but let me ask you. There's one by Swedish Mate no, that look, was an archive video. Looks yeah, like. Swedish Mate is an archive channel for sure. I know that person. Uh, but let me ask you, why even do this, man? Like, I, Well, I, okay. So let me... Few months and yeah, and I... Okay. okay, here we go. If you're looking really carefully, you'll see that Matt is full of shit. Videos are unavailable. In fact, there are multiple videos that are unavailable People, uh, as he scrolls through his list. These ones that are up here listed like this, they're, they're still, the report went through, but nothing happened. But the ones where you see the blanks like this, nothing over on this side, those videos have been removed. The videos he flagged, those got taken down. Unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. Matt is full of shit. He's full of shit, and he proved himself to be full of shit. So here's Kraut doing his PR campaign, his year-long redemption arc, and completely fucking it up by looking like an asshole in relation to Black Pigeon Speaks and Ethan Ralph. Here's Monday Matt trying to claim that he never got any channels taken down or videos taken down, where when he's going through his flagging history, you see videos unavailable, and that those are the videos he filed reports on. So I, I don't know how he's claiming to be innocent in any of this. And once again, they're all together, just all hanging out. You've got uh, Kraut and T, Monday and Matt, Davina, Habib, Liberal Sanity Project, people like Tommy C and Donga, just everybody hanging out together, kicking it back doing gay ops together and thinking that the audience on the internet is so retarded that they can't go back and look at a screen cap or a video or watch a stream that took place and see that they're clearly full of shit that they're clearly wrong and they're lying brilliant matt very smart very smart of you i see that the smart boy attitude of the others you're hanging out with now is really rubbing off on you i also like how matt's talking about ralph uh you know, going down in flames, his wife leaving him in a show, uh, being a disappointment and the viewership leaving. When Monday and Matt's channel is bleeding like a stuck pig. It's nothing but red. Day after day after day after day. For months, it's been nothing but red. Ever since he got exposed as somebody that can't take criticism on the internet. Ever since people saw that he would flag down videos that made fun of him for being a fucking retard. So it's him and Kraut, neck and neck. Run into the bottom of the barrel to see who can get there first. Just, just beautiful. Continuing on with our, our little theme of year in review, we've got Donga. Donga's gone through a hell of a transformation. From the host of the Morning Kumite, a show that brought in thousands of people watching it, to the host of the Trailer Park Indian Hour, with maybe 200 or 300 people watching it, with just him and dead air, and nothing but hours to kill as the super berries dry up waiting for his fight with Andy Worski coming up on the 19th, because that is a thing that's taking place. Tonka loved to go around talking about how he wanted to fight people in real life. I'll fight you, I will wrestle wrestle you, for the Superberries, for the honor of the Donga tribe. I'll get my squeaky, squeaky wheelchair, my iron buffalo, to take me to the arena, and I will fight you in fisticuffs, sir. So finally, after saying that for years to everybody that he encountered and anybody that uh, ever told him he was a retard, somebody finally took him up on the offer, and Andy Worski has decided to fight Tonkasaw. But uh, strange things are happening. You see, initially, when Tonka challenged Andy Worski to the fight, he said he was going to set it up. He could get the promoter. He could get the ring set up. Not a, not a big issue. But the, qu the story quickly changed, though. He started having issues setting it up. Well, Tonka occasionally has Tara La Rosa, who is uh, an MMA or UFC, I can't remember which, but somebody with actual connections in the, the fighting world as a guest on a stream, and she said, hey, not a problem, champ. I'll set it up for you. 
So Tara LaRosa actually got the event set up. And she did it within like five minutes. She talked to a guy and he said, yeah, I'll book him on it. I'll let them come on. I'll let them wrestle, wrestle. We've got a real show scheduled, but I'll, I'll set aside 10 minutes for a bunch of YouTubers to sissy slap fight one another for our amusement. And, you know, with just a few stipulations. We just need you to sign a contract on camera. We need you to put up a photo for the promotional material. So, you know, we can get the, uh, the stuff out there so people can buy tickets. They're interested in coming into the show. And Andy had no problem with that. And he said he was going to train. He was going to put his best effort into it. Going to the gym, training with his uh, roommates, exercising. And if you've watched any of Andy's streams recently, you'll see him in a muscle t-shirt flexing. So he's, he's built a little muscle mass. He seems to actually be taking it somewhat semi-seriously. Or at least more seriously than Donga is. Now Donga told everybody that he was training with professional fighters, real MMA high-level people, at a special gym that he has a membership at, that apparently is 600 miles from where he lives, and he does it for eight hours a day. So he'll do his wheelchair happy hour, the Indian reservation show, for three or four hours, and then drive the 600 miles to the special gym and work out for eight hours, drive the 600 miles back, sleep for two minutes, and do a show again. Quite the busy bee that Tonka's been. Yet when Andy turned in his promotional material to do his Wrestle Wrestle event with Donga, Donga didn't turn in anything. Instead, he sent them a fucking cartoon picture. <laughs> I think, do I have this retarded fucking poster? Let me see if I can find this. Because you kind of have to see it to believe it. It's, it's pretty bad. In fact, you know, if I enter it, uh, let's see, a fight poster. Let's see if I can pull this up. Oh, God, yeah, here it is. Found it. It's on Tara LaRosa's uh, Twitter account, but I can just I can put it up on screen. Not a big deal. There we go. So for their Valor Fighting Challenge, Andy sends in a, you know, a real picture. They're using that as a stand-in. And then Tonka sends in a cartoon avatar. Here's my cartoon picture. I'm Wiley fucking Coyote. When Andy Worski enters the ring, I'm going to fire an Acme rocket at his head. That's my fighting challenge to Andy. Can he handle my cartoon powers? Can he handle my Acme abilities in the ring? Fucking Roger Rabbit here and his blue-skinned avatar rather than putting up a fucking promotional picture for the big fighting event? This is uh, Donga, remember? Donga tells everybody what a professional fighter he is, how he's done this for years, and he's, he's fought professionally and amateurly, not just in wrestling, but in mixed martial arts. And yet he can't even send in a fucking promo pic for the poster for people buying tickets to put asses in the seat. It's almost like he's embarrassed of his physique, or he's afraid people are going to see that he's in a wheelchair. Now, I can't really tell you what's going to happen, but I do know this. Tonka has had people on his show, uh, people that have discussed a supposed leak that took place. I suppose one piece of information you should know about Andy Worski is that about two or three months back, uh, somebody released a, a video claiming that Andy Worski was having conversations with underage girls trying to get nudes. Well, the person that released that apparently doctored it. And people were able to show that it was doctored. Other people went in and had conversations with the person and said that they admitted they doctored it. Nevertheless, Tonka had these people and showed this evidence and gloated on Twitter about Andy Worski being a pedophile. So Andy's uh, a little bit fucking pissed off, a little bit angry, looking to get a little bit of blood. And uh, he's made an event out of this. He's going to be flying out there. He's going to be getting a, a hotel room with like six or seven other fucking people. They're going to be streaming about it and making a show out of it. But Tonka, on the other hand, hasn't shown any fighting montages, hasn't put up any training pictures, Hasn't talked about his plans once he gets there. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I don't think that he could back out at this point. Because if Tonka backs out at this point, he will never have an ounce of respect on the internet. After setting it up, if he backs out, it will be one of the most shameful things that he could possibly ever do. Ever do. There's no way he will ever live it down. All his tough, ta or all his tough talk will evaporate. Now, I know he's a, a wind talker, so maybe he thinks he can capture that evaporation and make it back into something respectable, but I assure you, you can't, Tonka. If you don't show to this event, you're fucked, buddy. Andy's looking for blood. I really hope you're training. I really hope you know how to fight, and I really hope you aren't crippled. Because when you get into the ring with Andy Worski, you better know what you're fucking doing. Because you called the dude a pedophile using doctored information, and he wants to fucking hurt you. And I think that that's his plan.
So that's coming up on the 19th. I mean, shit, that's not that far away. We're, we're talking less than four weeks away. We're going to get to see two YouTubers slap each other like retards. So kudos for us, I guess. At least we'll get some entertainment out of it. You tell me, chat, what are you putting the odds at? What are the odds? Who, who are you favoring in this fight that's coming up? Dead career. I've seen a lot of wheelchairs in the chat at the moment. Tonka win-win. Wrestle Andy Superberry. Tonka want smoke em peace pipe. Kimosabi. <laughs> Jets. I'm seeing, somebody said, you said a draw, really? The only thing drawn here is the picture of Tonka that he put up because he's too ashamed to show people what he looks like, the physical shape he's sitting in right now after challenging people to fights. I'm seeing a lot of Andes. I'm seeing a lot of Andes, chat. Us? I, I agree. I agree. We do win getting to watch this. We're going to get to see somebody get the shit kicked out of him. Tonka win-win. I'm seeing a few Tonkas, but I'm seeing a lot of Andes. A lot of Andes and a, a couple of draws and a few Tonkas. I don't think they favor Tonka Saw. Maybe if he put up a real fucking picture, it'd be a different story. Well, hopefully the ambulance could park in the wheelchair accessible area so they can, you know, cart you out, get you set up, and bring you to the hospital after Andy's done demolishing you. I mean, you're probably going to need that physical help. Maybe failure can carry you. You should, you should dress up as a hot dog or something, some food item, so you can confuse failure into carrying you out of the arena after Andy hurts you. If he thinks you're food, he'll pick you up. And that's your best bet to get to the hospital in time. It's a little pro tip for me to you. Best of luck, Kimosabi. We're, we're all looking forward to your revenge on the white man for all the smallpox blankets and stolen land for beads. Uh, he didn't draw that. It's fan art. I'm aware. I'm aware Taka did not draw that. I'm just saying that these are the pictures that he sent in to use rather than sending actual headshots or physique uh, pictures. Failure loves Tonka. I'm sure he does. <laughs> He's just, they want to live together in a little wigwam. Oh, Tonka, you're my maze. My sweet, delicious... That's what you need to do, Tonka. Use the heritage of your people and dress up like corn. And that'll, that'll get, man, leave a little butter, salt, and pepper by you. That'll get Failure to pick you up. Rush you to the hospital. Hopefully, hopefully they, you know, Andy leaves you in one piece. Who knows how that's going to turn out. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. Oh my God, going over the the history of these people is uh it, it's a little more fun than I remembered. A little more fun than I expected. I mean, it's disastrous. What the fuck's going on? Kraut, you're losing. Davina, you're losing. Matt, you are losing. And trying to tell people shit didn't happen when they can see it clearly did happen is probably the wrong approach. And going after the people. And the ways that you are, and then getting embarrassed when you fuck it up continually, is probably the wrong approach. I'm not sure if Liberty or Liberal Sanity Project convinced you that everything was airtight, but you look like assholes when they showed the archive showing the link to the actual citations. And, you know, I, I, I didn't show this, but you can go look for yourself. Go to a Black Pigeon Speaks video, click the description, and it'll have a link to his fucking website. This is like one of the only guys on fucking YouTube. That'll put up 482 goddamn citations. So I don't know what what you what were you thinking was going to happen. It's so dumb. Even if he didn't have that citation in there, he had like 82 other ones. Oh fuck, he forgot one. Who cares? They're YouTube videos. He doesn't even need to put fucking citations up in the first place. But what if it's plagiarized? Oh, <laughs> ethics in YouTubing. I'm sorry. He'll never get that PhD in shit posting now. I wanted my master's in video content creation, but I just can't pass the class because I didn't have citations in my description. You sound like idiots. What are you doing? Oh, you know, I, I suppose we could take a minute to talk about uh, Baked Alaska. Where's Baked? I mean, my God. Last I heard, he was walking dogs out in California, hanging out with the Irony Bros. Baked was somebody, again, that had a a show that was doing semi-well. He was doing Late Night as opposed to Tonka Saw's Morning Kumite. But he turned on his audience. Turned on his audience and pissed right in their face. Because he had some crack whore from California offer him a little bit of pussy. He decided to just throw it aside, attack his audience, tell them they were toxic, tell them they needed to reform their ways or get the fuck out. And uh, he and I had a confrontation over that. 
and Bake kind of fucked off for a little bit. But then he showed up on Ice Poseidon's stream. And Ice Poseidon, you know, didn't really know what to make of it. His chat's telling him Bake is fucking idiot. And, you know, Ice, you're, you're making a mistake. Ice was kind of still split on it. And then what do you know? Jared Holt uh, does an article on Ice Poseidon talking about how he, you know, is involved in all right shit. There was some article that came out attacking him. I can't remember exactly. I think it was Holt. Maybe it was somebody else. But right around this time, somebody sends Ice Poseidon a clip of uh, Baked Alaska and screaming out shit like white power. Like, you know, in fact, I think I have a video clip. Let me see if I can cue this up. Uh, if it takes too long, we'll skip it. But uh, give me give me a moment here. It's just the look on his face. You can see the moment he's like, yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of Baked Alaska. <laughs> Bake the last because they're going to have to go away now. Metacor has made you the center of all his attack. You think it's racist to say nigga as a white guy? No, thing. not at all. What's up, man? I don't. Actually, Isn't that what an alt-right is, though? You're supposed to think it's racist? Uh, let's see. Here we go. No. I want to see if I can find the exact moment. I don't think you even know what that means. <laughs> no, I don't know what any of this shit is. friend of Bake Alaska. Hey. He's a real one and had a lot of people. Love you, TFW. Thank you, bro. YouTube. Imagine being an SJW in Ice Poseidon. Exactly. Gay. I know. There's a lot of SJWs in here. Baked gay ice to set up a stream like he will. Game, dude. And there's no one else. Yo. Definitely right. not voting for Hillary. I vote. When I say that I supported Bernie, like. Really vote. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What is, what, dude, what is this? See that little head tilt? A little head tilt that says, I might have miscalculated here. Maybe, maybe, ba maybe Baked Alaska was not the guy I should be bringing onto my streams. Maybe, maybe I've made a mistake. Not sure if you're noticing the nose there, but I don't think Ice Poseidon wants, wants that exact energy around his streams. Oh, Baked. Back to dog walking it is with you. Had a show, was doing so well, and you listened to... You listen to people that told you, "Oh, you need to get rid of your audience. They're they're far too toxic, baked. They're too they're too devious. They're too bad for you. Trust us. Get rid of your audience. Turn on the people that supported and helped you uh, grow your channel. You need to throw them out like garbage." And then it blows up in his face, and he thinks he he's gonna bounce back. He goes to Ice Poseidon, and Ice Poseidon eventually shit kicks him, and then there he is, walking dogs for rich people in California, and streaming Fortnite on Twitch to an audience of three people. You know, I, I suppose if it's a race to the bottom, Baked Alaska has a hell of a head start. Matt and uh, Crowder are going to need to catch the fuck up because he's running out full steam. Oh, Baked, what did you do? You threw it all away. Why did you throw it all away? All right, let me let me get caught up on some of these super chats here. Uh, let me see, where did we leave off? From Bagel Goose, 1488, think of the children. Ellie Perez, so Jim, what are you wearing tonight? Uh, clothing. From Cian Green, didn't you hear, or did you, or didn't you hear? Answer the last day if you did. Take some more shekels. Any thoughts on the yellow vests? I haven't actually kept up to date on what the yellow vests are doing. I know they are doing their protests on the weekends. I saw a couple of videos of them getting corralled by the police, but I'm not sure how it went down last weekend or this weekend. I know that uh, the government, I know that, uh, I can't even remember his name off the top of my head, the French president uh, gave in a little bit on certain things. Uh, but if they're smart, they'll keep pressing it, because if he's going to buckle on that, he'll buckle on other things. Uh, from New Guardian, top of the morning, to you from the Dingo SS, Sean Turner. Jim, who are your trio and king of fighter? Mine is Iori, Kula, and maybe Andy. The issue is, I suck so bad, but I love to watch Mugen KOF videos. I suck so bad that my little cousin, no experience, can kick my ass. Well, you know what? I will let you learn what my trio is if you challenge me to a fight. We can, uh, we can have a fight in King of Fighters. I'll install it. Uh, hit me up on Steam, and we'll see which one of us is worse. I probably am. I'm just going to spoiler that for you. Breakdance Express. Jim, how disappointing is it every time a new low-energy, soy-soaked mastermind of Gayops appears? Oh, it's fantastic. If you don't find this entertaining, I don't know what to tell you. Ink Penification. Yo, bro, this track be lit like a motherfucker. Axton Hill. So Jim's developed a taste for trap music. Cool. 
Switch 1E, Boogie 1488 just died in a car crash. Well, ripping pepperoni, fat boy. Recamocus Reed, hey Jim, I'm 20, but my wiener doesn't seem to ever work around the ladies. It's a good one, but I recoil when they go for it. I can jerk it, but that seems to be, <laughs> it seems to weird them out. Any advice? Uh, well, just try harder. Just try harder. You just got to put the effort in. Shiva Darling, son of a gun, streaming late at night. Have some shekels and go to bed. Merry Christmas, Jew. From uh, St. Guillotine, Gas of Furfag, Skeptics, and Donga Tribe. J.H. Freeman, Apple won't let me say certain things, so can you give my channel a shout-out for a video I'm working on? Also, please call, or call Kevin a nerd again. Uh, well, if the channel is John H. Freeman, there you go. Uh, Victor Phantasm, Merry Christmas, Fajit. Jimmy Coors, Groomy Boomer, Groomy. Joey Jojo, I've been playing Mortal Kombat since I was a kid, and I always main Melina since MK2. MK9 Melina is the best version, but she is not bad in MKX. I'm going with Tanya. I'm sticking right now to my pole dancing girl. We'll see how the tournament happens on the 30th. Uh, we'll see We'll see what happens. I, I, the speculation is open. Milk-fed gimp. My balls are so blue, Jim Jam. No Mia video, no T... Er, that guy with the glasses skeptic series, and now no underwater objective tactical hamsters. Just kidding. Keep the salt coming, Mary Xmas. Well, the hamster video, the hamster video is coming up. The skeptic series, I, I said I was going to take my sweet time with it. I work on large time scales, and as you've been watching over the last year, these people uh, just have a habit of shooting themselves in the foot. Trust me, though, it's coming. From Moon Fairy, hey Jim, you've probably addressed this before, but do you think these people have always been this retarded, or is it like staring into the abyss and they slowly turned into their perceived enemy? I think they were perhaps always retarded, but the people they were arguing with were a little bit more retarded, and so nobody really noticed. Nordic Nationalist dreaming of a white Christmas. Beach Bomb, loved you, or love you, Jim. Uh, thank you. From Shekelmeister, happy Christmas, you white basketball Americans. I'm flying to Asia. Anyway, what do you think of Ralph not training at all? And why won't you play manly 1v1 games like CS 1.6 or COD Modern Warfare 2 with Ralph? Well, he had a choice to pick through on the list, and he picked Mortal Kombat 10. What can I say? From 13 Stooge, thoughts on sticks. Guy comes off as a cuck sometimes. I haven't really kept up with sticks. I'm not sure what he's doing. I know... The last thing I really paid attention to is he hit, like, was it twenty five or 26,000 on election night? Had a really big stream. I think that was one of the first really huge ones he's ever done. So I think he's starting to really hit his momentum. From Victor Phantasm, boss, where are you? Eva, and that caged Filipina going to go on a cruise or something? Figure you used to food poisoning or carnival might be okay. Also, a sandals. Also, Memphis Barbecue Stinks got to go to Cooper's in Liano, Texas. I will check out Cooper's if I get the chance. I'll read a few more of these and get back to it. Spooky Weep Trash, watching you while wrapping presents is a lovely way to spend Christmas. Eve Eve, Merry Christmas, Jim. Well, Merry Christmas to you as well. St. HCN, I'm Mr. Medicare, and I full, fully endorse the amazing album by St. HCN, album of the century right there. Wolfbane, Dragon Ball LGBT. Mike Maddis, top comment, cleanup crew for health. David, you fucked up the screenshot. I guess that's what happens to turds that call a Big Mac a Royale with cheese. I'll read two more here. Naughty Caramel Bunny 74 I've been naughty all year. Spank me. I mean groom. And finally, HTRTU. Haberman got nothing on T-Dub. Well, T-Dub is the bringer of the hot fucking banter. T-Dub is the bringer of the bands. So I suppose if we're going to do the recap, right, we need to talk about Don Sargoon. Sargon himself. Mr. I've got a soup or a suit and you don't. Well, he's got soup too, but he's taking forever to bring it to my table. Now, uh, Sargon and I have had a bit of a back and forth over the last year, uh, all resulting from me laughing at a Murdoch Murdoch clip and then laughing at a suit comment. But Sargon's been through some trials and tribulations lately. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but he's been deplatformed from Patreon. Oh, how terrible. How terrible. Free speech, I say. Free speech, how could you do it? It's terrible when somebody advocates for you to be deplatformed and removed from a service, isn't it, Sargon? It's, uh, it's uh, a horrendous thing. But oh, wait a minute. That's what you do, though, isn't it? You know, it's hard to feel sympathy for Sargon of the Cod. It's easier to feel it for somebody like ER or Mumpkey Jones or James Alsup or any of the other myriad people that have been fucked with on Patreon or YouTube or any social media platform. But watching Sargon talk about the Patreon purge and how it's wrong that he's being deplatformed, 
And then looking at statements he's released on social media addressed to other YouTubers makes it hard to feel sympathetic for him. Now, maybe you're not aware this has been going on, but Sargon has multiple different Twitter accounts. These are accounts that he's claimed credit for in multiple streams and videos that he's owned up to and said these are, in fact, his accounts. These are uh, things that have been confirmed by people that he knows, like V. Monroe and others. So let's take a look at uh, our brave martyr of free speech here and how he conducts himself on social media when it comes to deplatforming. Let's start it off with this. This is Black Swordsman 1. This is an account that uh, Sargon of Akkad has. After Ethan Rolfe was deplatformed from YouTube, after he was removed when the Wall Street Journal wrote an article about him, saying that he was an evil alt writer and that the money was racist and that Ethan should be dealt with, somebody tweeted this out. And then Sargon, I guess, wanted to boost it out there so people could see it. It's from Mr. Meadow Groomer. Nice, by the way. Wow, it appears the latest Andy Worski live stream featuring the charming The Ralph Retort has some lovely donations via YouTube Super Chat system. I have no idea why Wall Street Journal would investigate this crowd of lovable scamps. Sure hope the FBI don't catch wind, though. Party poopers. And there was a Super Chat in there that had some violent language. But why would Sargon, somebody that thinks deplatforming is so wrong, be retweeting a tweet targeted towards the Wall Street Journal uh, targeting Andy Worski, who wasn't the Ralph Retort, that's not fighting with uh, with Sargon of Akkad. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But if we look at another Sargon Twitter account, we see that uh, that pattern of behavior continues. It gets more direct. Uh, not Sargon, again, brilliant name choice. At Twitter support, the user Mr. Anti-Bully is, er, is a user who was banned on an account called Mr. Medicare and is violating the terms and conditions by circumventing the rules after being banned and having an active account. He leads an online group who harassed a mentally infirm man to suicide. So here's Sargon a month before being martyred for free speech on Patreon, contacting a social media platform and saying, hey, look, somebody's violating your subjective terms and services. Maybe you should do something about that. Huh. But it's not like it could get worse. I mean, Sargon, as a member of a foreign political party that works for UKIP, doing youth recruitment and taking part in their rallies and talking to top memberships, he would never be so stupid as to do something that would make the party look bad, like I don't know. I'm just notifying the FBI about apparent threats from self-confessed pedophile Andy Worski. He appears to be planning some kind of a shooting rampage. Now, you know, looking at that, I wonder a few things. Why is a for why is a member of a foreign political power or uh, why is a member of a foreign political party tweeting another country's law enforcement about a man who's going to be flying into it within the next month saying that he's going to commit a shooting rampage? That seems a uh, a little dangerous, doesn't it, Sargon? I mean, that's a little beyond just deplatforming somebody. That's not asking Twitter support or the Wall Street Journal to write an article to get somebody removed from YouTube. You're, ha you're tweeting at the fucking FBI saying a man coming into the country is planning a violent attack. You, a member of UKIP, a party official talking to the top leadership, a foreigner using my country's law enforcement to try to target another foreigner coming into the country. Now, Sargon's addressed this and said, oh, it's a joke. It's just banter. You don't get it. It's funny. It's funny. I'm just, it's a joke. Fuck Andy Worski. And points to the FBI's Twitter account saying, well, you know, they say don't send them tips. Well, you know, that doesn't mean they don't look at what you tweet at them. And maybe when you say that some foreigner coming into their country is going to commit a fucking violent attack on people, maybe somebody will take a look at it. Maybe Andy Worski gets dragged off a fucking plane because you're funny little tweets. So it's really hard for me to have sympathy for somebody like that when they cry about being, you know, a, a goddamn martyr for free speech and they bitch about their Patreon being taken away. Especially when they're tweeting, you know, social media saying that uh, other people are violating terms of service. Now, luckily for Sargon, Jordan Peterson's run in to uh, defend him, told everybody to wash their dicks, so hopefully that'll win the day. You all remember Jordan Peterson, right? The guy that, uh, oh, what was that? Oh, yeah, Deep Platform Faith Goldie from their free speech event because she associated with people he didn't like. Hey, hey, uh, Faith Goldie, we can't have you give a speech here because it's bad optics. Kind of sounds like Patreon saying to Sargon, hey, Sargon, we can't have you on our platform because it's bad optics. So I'm sure Jordan Peterson's going to save the fucking day on that one. 
just uh just a bang up year all around really just uh, a magical magical year magical year of d platforming and gay ops and warfare between all sorts of different people uh getting fucking crazy as the machine bears down on everybody now who knows what 2019 will hold in store for all of us i'm sure it's going to be a fantastic time now i have uh what i'm trying to do right now at least is transition over to streamy for streams and still upload videos here of course so I'm going to break this up. Uh, we're going to continue over at Streamy. I'll read through the rest of the Super Chats over here. Anybody that's inclined and wants to, you can find me over at stream.me backslash Mr. Medicare. And we will continue, you know, continue the stream over there. I've also got training day number three planned, so I'm going to be doing some of that. But, uh, yeah, it's just been a hell of a year. It's been a hell of a year of a lot of gay ops. And it feels like it's, it's reaching a crescendo. Like the finale is just around the corner. I don't know how it's going to play out, but I feel like it is going to play out, and we're going to reach a conclusion finally. So that should be entertaining. Well, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy your holidays and spend it with your loved ones. Hope you've had a good year. Hope you had a good week and a good month. Hope the holidays hold good things in store for you. Uh, remember, be thankful for all the good things in your life. Uh, go out there. Have a good, uh, a good holiday, a good Christmas. I've got my tree set up. I've got the stockings hung. We've got Christmas movies we're going to watch. Got the eggnog selected to get shit faced on bad milk drinks. I think that's what eggnog is. I don't know. I've never really drank eggnog. Hopefully it's not a bad kind of drinking experience, but we'll find out. We'll find out as we do that. So let me jump into the super chats here. And then uh, we'll take a small break and we'll go over to Stream Me. Because we've got a musical contest coming up and we've got a few other things planned. Where did I leave off? Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Snobby Lion, have you seen Mamology 101's latest video about Jarble the Hud? Monday in Fat deserves every bit of hate that comes his way. Love you, Jimbo. Bort and Ernie, is it considered going too far if I custom order a body pillow for my friend's Christmas party? He screwed me over and embarrassed me at Uno night. From Dick Fingers, Jim used OPSEC, CIA Glowy confirmed. Horsehead, you always sound like the Wizard of Oz. Let me push this button, crank this lever, spin this wheel, Wizard of Jim. Mr. Skello, sorry, Chad, I tried looking for that Eminem video where he argues with conservatives on the street, loses, and then runs away like a little girl. I guess it's been removed. I really hope somebody can find that. I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's dash, two dash, two dash, dash, underscore. Davina low-key cutie, not gonna lie. From James Beanick, it was all an emotional connection, Kitty Style. Have you seen the Kitty Style streamy dot anime? Uh, no, I have not. Angela Ziegler, potatoes for Jim Stockings. Doll Smick, may not be much, but I hope it helps. Digger John, Nalog Shona Duat, Seamus O'Shaughnessy. Kunoff, uh, Kunoff Doom, happy holidays, Jim. My foreskin is missing. Everyone asked, where is Jim? But anyone asked, how is Jim? Merry Christmas, Sweetie Squad Captain. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say I look forward to more of you in 2019 on Streamy. Cheers, Jim. Random asshole. Kraut plans failed because his academics didn't respond. Well, he always fucks up. Kraut is a continual fuck up. Medicare Fembot. Get fuck skeptics in Donga Tribe. Dirk Grobman. Merry Christmas, Jim. Here's another year of laughing at morons on the internet. Hail Medicare. From Jer Jer Uberborn. Thanks for the entertainment. From the Guardian, wow, this shit is fake and gay. Spiner needs to stop. It's just sad at this point. Maybe the HRT is messing with his ability to think. From Horsehead, could we get another Davina Gay Ops art contest? Terry Coyle, finally managed to get home in time to catch the live stream. It's a Christmas miracle. VAWBC carry Sweetie Squad for life? So what you're saying is, laugh my fucking ass off. Kraut's awful spelling is forever telling. Uh, yeah, it is interesting how in those screen caps, both Patreon is misspelled and Pastebin is misspelled. Who do we know that has difficulty spelling English words? Hmm. Deep fried lettuce. Even if the typos weren't there, the time saps are still wrong because they accused the avatar or anime avatar of bleeding it two weeks later. The Bone Zone. Watch, listen to The Bone Zone, the only podcast officially endorsed by Jim in the state of Israel. Josh Moon and Benjamin Dot on Yahoo. Merry Christmas, Jim. From DeWolfie, which was worse, Tumblr's countermeasures against 4chan or this? That uh, the Kraut and Company's OP. Uh, I, I, well, I'd have to say Tumblr. They thought posting gore on 4chan was going to do something, which is just really fucking stupid. Ocean Man, we must secure a future for white children. From Medicare Fembot, 
Going to clip tonight, but Donga defended Kraut on the Rage After Storm situation. Kraut didn't do nothing. Sir, oh, lost my spot there. Hold on, we're, we're almost done. Making it my way through here. Oh, uh, let's see where the hell is that. Okay. G okay. Sir Bon Voyage, Jimbo, your enemies are uniting from Sinister for a victory beer after you make or after you smoke Ralph in Mortal Kombat. The Turkish Zoo. I know where the money David raised for D went to. He spent it on medical fees to chop his own penis off and become Divina. Stunning and brave. Moderator Marcy, press F to disrespect 2018. Douglas Stewart, Jim, some details from the real Sargon op were actually released. It was pretty well organized. And it had zero to do with Ralph. Merry Christmas. From Jack Powell, you're still bad at Mortal Kombat XL, Jim. Well, of course, you. Nobody starts good at a video game. You've got to put the practice in. Gray-haired snake, there's still a week left in 2018. What the hell else can happen? I'm not sure, but we'll find out. From Bruka Tenchi, Medicare Man versus the Sinister Skeptics. Lord Azuka, Medicare PTSD support group has become a reality. Take those shekels for the entertainment. From Terry J. I. Jim, love the Minnesota Vikings. Skull, 1589. James Russell, Trump is leaving Syria, gas the Kurds, Assad wins. Troy Fowler, missed the first 45 minutes, so here's a five. Thanks for all the entertainment, Jimbo. Hope you release more VODs soon. From Medicarist, Murdochian Archiver, I covered Ralph's Discord saga with the crowd. Are you aware that the main perpetrator is a guy fucking with both camps, Ralph and the skeptics? Thanks for the stream. Well, what I'm aware of is the fact that, again... Kraut and Davina are the stupidest fucking people on earth, and uh, I always look forward to them stumbling over themselves in a complete and utter self-implosion. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Even after the BPS thing, it hasn't even been more than two and a half weeks since that, and just stumbled right into another fuck-up. Son of Tiamat, anyone who defends Sargon is a spineless sycophant, or a Sargonfant, as I call them. Gifted monster, we all know Mundane and Kraut would blow Ralph for views. HTRTU, Faceless Man Bad, The Skeptics. Barbecue Beers, Dream Groper, Come Rescue Me. From Clan Green, Smooth Brain Matt Listens to Chapo, Confirmed. From Kumbala One, did I hear that correctly? Matt said, my girlfriend and her kid. He could knock her up, no wonder he doesn't care about the kid. It's not his. From Tezuka829, are you going to leave Patreon? Interested in your opinion on the whole debacle? What should we do to support you? Well, I think if you're going to... A, 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 people talking about what to do in regards to Patreon ties into the issue of people talking about what they're going to do about deplatforming in the first place. And I feel like, I mean, I know websites, certain websites, especially ED, have dealt with getting fucked with on the internet for years. But the real heavy-handed shit, where it's targeting almost individuals at this point, started with, I believe, Andrew Anglin. I mean, I think that's the first real key example of it. And they tried to strip everything from him and drive him off the internet. And then you had this happen to other people, specific individuals getting called out. And then websites like Gab or BitChute having payment processors pulled from them. Uh, you know, having uh, Microsoft say that they weren't going to do business with them. Uh, you had Alex Jones basically driven off every social media platform and every video sharing site that exists, having to go back to his own website to try to survive. It just, it grows a little more each and every time. And I think what you're going to find out when you're dealing with a Patreon situation is it's not necessarily Patreon itself that's going to be the biggest hindrance to dealing with what the problem is. It is the payment processors and the backroom financial dealings that are the issue. Patreon has been forced to bend the knee before, and I think that's part of the reason they won't talk about it. Stripe has as well. And when you hear them have conversations with different websites and individuals, you start to pick up on it, that there are decisions coming up from banks and credit card companies dictating policies for these payment processors and these financial middlemen. So when you want to create an alternative service to a Patreon or create a new video sharing platform or create a new website or try to tie it into social media, you have to be, you know, you have to come to the realization that you are fucking with really powerful, rich individuals. And until you can identify who exactly those powerful, rich individuals are that are taking swings at you, you won't accomplish shit. You need to put a face and a name together. You need to start figuring out exactly who it is that these companies are the ones applying pressure and setting policy uh, when it comes to fucking with people on the internet. So I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I just think it's going to get worse. 
I, I think more people will be driven off Patreon and PayPal and all these other payment processors. I think more people are going to be deplatformed on social media. I think people are going to lose their web domains. I think people are going to lose their social media accounts. Remember, the 2020 elections, that's the big thing. A lot of interested groups um, realized they fucked up with Donald Trump. They thought it was enough of a joke that they could stop paying attention and that uh, he would, you know, self-implode. So, yeah, let them talk about it on Twitter. Let them make money making videos talking about it. And then he got elected. And everybody in Silicon Valley and all these, you know, different financial groups thought, holy shit, we can't let that happen again. And so you start to see kind of a targeted approach to taking out political pundits, really, and, uh, you know, those that appeal to that base. You know, let's remove them. Let's limit their voice. Let's segregate and quarantine them. And I think that push is going to continue and get even bigger leading up to the next presidential election because they are not going to let it happen again. They are not going to let you guys talk about it on Twitter. They are not going to let you guys make YouTube videos. They are not going to let you guys make uh, fucking streams about it. They are going to segregate you and they are going to quarantine you. And they have a lot of ways of doing that. Uh, if you look at 4chan, you know, anonymous uh, image board, big place for people to go talk, already split into two different domains. So what does that mean? Well, you've got the political board, or politically incorrect poll, on 4chan.org. It's not one of the 4chan uh, boards anymore. And if you look in the news recently, especially in the UK, even if Article 13 and 11 don't go through, well, what do you have? Well, you've got the new law that got passed, that, that finally got pushed through, saying that you're going to need to provide a driver's license or a birth certificate or some kind of actual identifying piece of information if you want to look at something that might have pornography on it. They're going to give you a special login token that'll be attached to your browser so you have permission to look at porn. So, you know, memes are kind of international, right? When you when you start to get a groundswell of support for something, it's not just localized to, to a nation. It's kind of international in that regard. So you start to segment all these little voices and then you kind of cut out swaths of people from being able to talk. And the UK, for instance, and that's why I bring it up as an example, well, how are Brits going to go on, you know, politically incorrect to shitpost if there's porn on it, because it can be posted on an orange board, uh, if they don't show a fucking government ID to get their license to jack off? I don't know about you, but I don't want to give the government a photo ID so I can go jack off. That's disastrous. And I'm sure it's, you know, uniquely identifiable. So they're going to know exactly what you're jerking it to. So good luck with that shit. But yeah, it's just, it's headed into a bad place. I made a video three years ago called Wake Up, and I said the Alamo is coming. We're getting there. The Alamo is coming. The last final stand on the internet before it gets completely sanitized and turned into a Buick commercial. My advice to you uh, is, I guess, fight it if you can. If you got a good idea, best of luck. Otherwise, enjoy yourselves while you can. You're going to be telling your kids about what it was like to post anonymously on the internet, and they're going to be mystified by that. Because they have to provide a government ID and have a real ID attached to all their fucking accounts. They're, they're not going to believe that you have that kind of freedom. But I don't want to dwell on this too much. It is the holidays. Let's, uh, let's keep it nice and positive. From Lepa, do you watch RWBY? I heard a redemption arc. Lol. Uh, no, no, I don't. Anemic Crusader. Oh, God, I can smell the sheer soy-socked cuckoldery of these poofters from all the way over here in Australia. Merry Jesus Man Jimbo. Have a good one. From Luigi Gabriel Zanetti. Merry Christmas, Jimbo. Thanks for the entertainment. Bex Fire. Tis the season to enjoy ro or Jim roasting fat goits on an open fire. Stacy Mattire. Merry Christmas. Today's fun day was well worth the wait and perfect for a year ender, but Matt's dishonesty is really hard to listen to. From HDR to you, 2018 truly is the year of the cow. Kang Tut. Wasn't it Zoom the groom who made up the pedo stuff about Worski? I uh, know that was actually anal vape, I believe. Uh, Jessica Eustace. And he has to snort coke in order to keep the, uh, his other half, Adam, under control. Not doing so unleashes a demon murderer willing to destroy everything. Dead legs, Donga, will be dead to the neck down, Donga. Woo! Not a lot of people in your corner there, Tonka. VAWBC carry, Donga only arm wrestle. John 14, what section should I buy on Ticketmaster? I, I don't know. I mean, it's 30 bucks a ticket, isn't it? <laughs> it depends how close you want to be to the ring. When you see a cripple get put into a coma. Troy Fowler, Jim, did you get the rights to the stream this shit? Uh, also, didn't Andy uh, try to challenge Tara to a fight? Lol, Taka's going to back out last minute. 
Well, you know, Terra LaRosa went on Andy's stream, <clears throat> and they did have words between each other, but I don't think Terra LaRosa is used to being told to shut her fucking mouth up and go make somebody a sandwich. And I think she liked it, because they got along after that. Andy said, listen, bitch, go cook me dinner. And I think she really enjoyed it, because they, they got along swimmingly after that. From Smeg Magician, Ben Shapiro viciously beats Tonka Saw and Andy Worski with facts and logics. Eric Berman, Epiphany Dongo was an extra in Avatar. Forgot he was in a fictional production and has believed he's a handicapped, blue-skinned native ever since. Shadow Angle, Iron Buffalo X, Malcolm Y. Nicholas Diorio, were you planning on stabbing Andy in the back and making a video after he gets annihilated, beaten to a pulp on the 19th? Andy is not going to lose. I have uh, confidence that Andy is going to win based on what I've seen. From The Ghost, Andy is going to crush Kimo Wasabi. Rogue Fragment, damn it, Jim, I thought you were doing a stream me now. I missed a big chunk of your stream. Okay, uh, getting to the end of the Super Chats here pretty quick. HCRTU, what about Kareen? What a delightful train wreck that was. I have no idea what she's up to. Probably still trying to fuck younger men and looking like she's 80 years old and uh, <laughs> she's only like, what, 40? Gimpy Troll, I and Miles Chong was on Ethan Van Schreier's scre er, stream last night, <clears throat> denying he did anything wrong doxing people and claimed you and uh, the KS forced him to apologize? And the KL kill stream. Uh, well, they can all deny whatever they want to deny. But I believe I said to Ian when that stream was going on that uh, it seems to me he was being used by somebody else. I can't remember their name. There's some gamer gator sent him private information on somebody and asked him to write a story, a headpiece on him. Uh, you'd have to go watch the stream. Uh, but as for him being forced to do it, I, you know, I thought he was doing it to protect his own integrity. What can I say? Farm Master Fear, once again, thank you for call or pulling the trigger on that shit streamer. <clears throat> Ace Ken Shader, I was at the Canadian Yellow Vest back on Saturday. Needless to say, they didn't like my sign, lol. One of them recorded me and posted it on Facebook. Uh, awesome job. Alan Down Under, I have to work tomorrow. Can I get some Jewish blessings to help me get through the day? Merry Christmas, you bundle of sticks. Uh, right back at you, Rabbi. Foxman2248, any news on the furries? Uh, I, you know, I, I've heard police investigations. I've heard some people have got arrested. I think it's kind of up in the air right now. Probably find out in the next, you know, the first couple of weeks of next year is probably when we're going to hear updates on what exactly is going on. Uh, Zero Tolerance, we was Vikings, it's best to be white, 1488. Gunther Slagorther, uh, who is the gray-haired white you used as a profile picture on the older streams? Also, do you do interviews and how does one contact you if you do? Are you talking about Hal Turner? Uh, that's That was the picture that I used. And uh, do I do interviews? Not really, but you can ask questions in normal chat or if I do a viewer call-in. Uh, Umpty Madhu, Hampshire, outranks you on Dick Masterson's rage board. How long before you're overthrown by hamsters? I want it to. Hampshire is fucking amazing. And I'm so goddamn happy that guy is back doing it. I, I'm looking forward to the video coming out, and I hope he gets a groundswell of support. And I hope he, I hope he makes something fucking amazing. Uh, Leo the Bum Tickler. Blanks in the best me or MK fighter. The vile delinquent thoughts on the GOP proposing gutting safe harbor. I don't know. I, I want to try to stay away from the politics stuff tonight. It's Christmas. I probably shouldn't have gotten into all the deplatforming stuff with the answer to that super chat. Didn't want to bring people's didn't want to bring people's moods down. Leo Convoy's reviews. Can I get a yo jo from you? Ah, uh, there you go. Leo the bum tickler. Blanca, I mean. Blanca. 6-8 Toast, in all seriousness, Merry Christmas, Jim. Thanks for all the great content. Uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. Spartan Covenant, Merry Christmas, boys. Uh, again, right back at you. 26K down the drain. Have you seen the Sargon anime? The animation is basically a glorified storyboard, but the writing is top-notch. you like the 18th person to bring it up. I'm going to have to go watch it. Wolfbane, why Sergen? Isn't it really Spurgen? From Jackson uh, Rotting, Merry Christmas to you, Jim, and your Cambodian. Tonka is the dirty chug and has set natives back hundreds of years. I hope Andy smashes his head in with his iron buffalo. Dmitry Anikov, my entry for the song contest is posted on the Twitter thread. Not sure if the grindcore, hardcore punk, but I hope you like it. Blue Satoshi, it's not V Monroe. It's more like V Monroe. The domain's available, by the way, if you have a Romanian ID. Merry Christmas, Jim. Uh, Chris Nemo, are you sub to PewDiePie? And please know Bull Sargon, Jim. 
Uh, no, I'm not subscribed to PewDiePie. Charles the Hammer, Jim, what whiskey should I get for Christmas to drink? I'm not a whiskey guy. I drink vodka. Kharkov is what I'd recommend. Michael, who it's? Does Sargon still actually believe he's going to be saved by Peterson's amazing new Patreon? I'm not sure exactly what Peterson's going to do, I'll be honest with you. Not sure how he's going to fix it. Uh, let's see. All right, almost at the end here, and then we'll take a half an hour break, and I'm going to jump over to stream me. Uh, Troy Fowler, Sargon once again claimed to be a free speech elitist, meaning you could say what, no, or whatever, no matter what danger it posed. Now he's reporting to FBI and Twitter. Kurt Vongel, Jim, give, uh, given that $5, a stripper will gladly flash her dirty, unkept genitals in my face. What can you do for your subscriber to match such unbridled value in these troubling economic times? I, I guess go spend it on the whore. <laughs> Have a good time. Be sure to wash your face afterwards. Uh, from Flower, look out, Jim. Soygo is coming for your channel with Gamergate 2.0. Maximilian Mayer Zorgo, just Max, when will you do a skeptic series of videos? It is coming. Zero the Hero Sargon is going down. He brought his, this on himself. Uh, message redacted. Don't know what that one was. Palmer Eldrick. Ermac is part of the Rootless Dysporia. Press G. Onreja. Keep giving them hell. Neuro719. Medica Fembot is doing the Lord's work. Keep it up. Anthony Wildman. Merry Christmas, Jim. Merry Christmas to you. Moderator Marcy. Press S to spit in trout. <laughs> spit, in, spit on him. Palmer Eldrick. Welcome, chat. Grab your nuts and pick a tune. Rocket Matt Coon, TikTok furry video when and the shit postings there. Sean Turner, why are playing or why are you playing PC Among? Play the latest game on the Soldier Boy gaming console. Move over Switch. The PS4 goes in the trash. He is an innovator. John Smith, I closed my Patreon down. Detested Dredge, Merry Christmas, Jim. FLA Profit, just a little cash for you. Matthew G, keep up the good fight. Metacurst, Murdarkian Oka or Archiver. Shit rat the fake <laughs> Shit rap. Shit rat the fake. Cap was from Cow. The misspelled Cap was to mend the damage when they figured that out. Same Anon behind the Sergun Patreon and Ralph's DC. King of Pirates Blackbeard. Merry Christmas, Jimbo. Shekelmeister, turn on the Super Chats on Streamy, please, Jim. Uh, no, I have them off over there. Puppetville Clem, any thoughts on the sick fuck who killed his cat? Uh, hopefully justice is achieved. Uh, fuck him. Ross Burgess. Uh, care for a hand of Gwent, stranger? Merry Christmas. And finally, flu or Leon McCarthy, F.U. Andy Worski, T.Y.T. Biatch. Okay, whew, made it through them all. All right, thank you for sticking around for that. Uh, I'm going to be moving over to Streamy in about 35, 40 minutes. I'll put up a link. Uh, my good friend will put up a link on Twitter if you want to follow me over there. Uh, it's stream.me backslash Mr. Mediker. I'm going to be having the song contest and doing daily training number three to kick uh, Ralph's ass in the contest that is coming up. I wish you all the merriest of Christmases. I hope you have a great time with your family and friends. Uh, hopefully it's uh, a, a good time, a good time of year. Enjoy yourselves and enjoy the New Year's as well. Uh, keep safe. Don't, uh, don't get too fucking crazy and pass out in freezing weather. Uh, that's always unpleasant, trust me. And uh, I will see you next year. Hamster video will be up by the end of the year. I do promise you that. Uh, one last one came through. Taj Gun, make Jim Medicare honorary black man. All right.